Hi, I'm Raymond Camden. I'm an, an Adobe Community Expert and a Cold Fusion Jedi Master. Uh, this morning I'll be talking to you about a new Cold Fusion 9 feature, and that's updates to caching. Now, Cold Fusion has had some, some good caching support for a long time. Specifically, it's had uh, support for query caching as well as complete page caching. Now, while this worked fine, it, you know, it certainly wouldn't cover every single case. We're going to look at what's been improved in CF9 to really kind of help you uh, enable your, your caching to be even more powerful. Now, the first thing we're going to start off with is showing a, a slow page and how the old school CF cache uh, tag helps it out. What I have here is a very, very simple page. You see there's some text on top, and at the bottom is the CF sleep command. That is going to simulate my slow process. On top, I put a CF cache tag. Now, when I run this, on that first load, notice that the page will be a bit slow to show up. When I reload it again, it should be a lot quicker. Let's see. Okay, it's a bit slow. And there it's done. And also notice that random number 19. Now, when I reload it, it should pop up immediately. Great. So again, CF cache, you saw it that extremely easy to use, one simple tag. The problem though is that you know a lot of times we only want to cache the slow part. We don't want to cache the entire page. Well, what's nice is that in CF9, they've enhanced the CF cache tag so we can actually wrap content uh, that we want to cache. Here's a quick example. On this page, I have you know kind of two main sections. The first part is a dynamic part that's going to output a random number. The second part is my slow portion. Uh, that's always going to be slow, and that's the thing that I want to cache. What I can do now is simply come in and wrap that slow part with CF cache. Put the tag on top, and put the tag on bottom. Okay. Now, when I load this page, again, that first hit will be slow. But on the second hit, notice it will be faster, and also notice that that random number will change. It will still be executing. All right, nice and slow. All right, let's reload. And hopefully you can see it's running real quick now, and that random number is changing every time. Let's take a look at another example. If we can cache one part of a page, and obviously we can cache multiple parts of one page. Here's another example where I have a couple dynamic parts that I want to keep dynamic, and also a couple slow parts that I want to cache. Notice then that both of those slow parts have been wrapped with the CF cache tag. I've also taken the opportunity on the second one to actually specify an idle timeout. I'm sorry, a, a time span. This will give it a, a 10 minute lifetime. If I don't care, I can leave it off. If I do care uh, about how long the cache lasts, I can specify it. All right, I'm loading it up. Again, that first hit will be slow. And I have two slow things on this time, so it'll be even slower. And now when I reload, you'll see real fast. And again, both those dynamic parts are working just fine, even though we have two cache parts on the same page as well. Well, now, the CF cache tag will work great when you just want to wrap a slow part and save that output, save that text, you know, and just, you know, resend it back out to your screen. What if you want you know, a bit more precise control over what's caching, or what if you want to cache non-text data, like a query, uh, like uh, an array of data, etc.? Well, CF9 actually adds a whole set of caching functions that allow you to do just that. You could put things in the cache, take things out. You could also examine the metadata about that cached information. Let's look at a simple example first. In this page, I am showing an example of both cache put and cache get. As you can guess, cache put will put something within my cache, and cache get will take it out. Now, I'm just putting a simple number in there, 5. This page won't be slow at all. Do notice, though, that when I put it in, I have to give it a key. In this case, I called it slow process. What you name it is totally up to you, but you know certainly name it something that makes sense based on what the process is. I've also shown an example of getting all the IDs. This could be uh, an interesting way to see what's currently being cached within your application. Let's run this page and see what happens. 
So again, it ran very fast. I wasn't actually doing anything slow, but you could see that when I got the value from the cash, it was exactly what I put in. When I called my cash get all IDs, it returned the one ID that I've stored in there so far. Now this will get a bit bigger as we put more and more things within the cache. Let's look at another example. Now in this one, I'm going to use another ColdFusion 9 uh, new feature, Array Contains. This will allow me to search an array of values and find a match. Now because cache get all IDs returns an array, I can use Array Contains to look for that. And essentially what I'm doing here is saying, have I already put this within the cache? Uh, typically, you would only want to do that one time, right? That's the whole point of caching. If I don't find it, I run my slow process, which again, I've kind of faked here with the sleep command. I put the result within the cache. If I already have that value in cache, I simply get it using cache git. Now, this example is a bit closer to what would be uh, in production code. So again, when I run it now, that first hit should be slow, and then after that, it should speed up. There we go, now let's run it again. And it's fast. ColdFusion also provides some metadata about the caching. As an example of that, this version of the file is the exact same as the last one, but now I'm running the cache get metadata function, and this will tell me what's going on with that cache. Let's look at that structure. There's a whole set of, of interesting uh, things in here, including how many times the cache has been hit, uh, how many, you know, when, when was it created, what's the age, etc. This is very useful information. You may be caching something that people just aren't using, or it may be caching something that's getting you know, a lot of traffic. And if so, then you could say, you know, let me go ahead and, and, and extend how long th this cache will exist for. So this is a great way as an admin to say, what am I caching and how effective is that caching going? We can even, you know, using the ability to get all the IDs and then using the ability to get the metadata, we can create one report that will dump all that information to screen. When I run this file, you'll see the examples I've, I've created so far. And there we go. Again, very useful for admins and something that you would look at again after your site's been in production for a while and see how effective your uh, caching is working. One last example. Almost always uh, when we do cache things, we'll have a need to get rid of that cache. Uh, maybe we've updated something, maybe we, we've, we've changed some setting. Well, what I've done in this code is simply provided a URL hook where if I pass in a particular URL parameter, in this case, reinit, it's going to remove the item from the cache. So now when I run this file, uh, again, on the first hit, it'll be slow, second and so forth, it'll, it'll be fast. And if I need to force it to, to reload into the cache, all I have to do is add that URL parameter. All right, first hit, it was already cached, so it was pretty quick. We'll reload just to be sure. And let's pass in that URL variable. And now it's slow again. And we'll also see that random number change. And if I get rid of that URL parameter and just reload, we can see it's still working with the cache. So hopefully you can see uh, this is uh, some very nice new support for caching. I can really increase and improve the performance of your ColdFusion based applications. Uh, definitely check out more at the Cold Fusion Developer Center. Thank you very much.